Getting out in the wilderness is more than a leisure activity for me. It's a lifestyle. I crave it and need it. Now I will spend 17 days traversing some of the most remote wilderness in Newfoundland, Canada. This is what I love to do. And my dog Saku, he's always by my side. It's August 3rd and we've reached the Grey River in remote southern Newfoundland, Canada. 25 of an approximate 220 total kilometers have been covered towards our end goal. Now we must decide on which path to take from here. Ascend the wild Grey River or head back into the high barren hills. Our next checkpoint is Mealpeg Lake, some 50 kilometers away. Hey, we made her bud. Good boy. I'd say we're calling her a day here, sack boy. So we've reached the Grey River, as you know, and uh, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. What a wicked spot. <sighs> Happy I made the decision to, uh, to walk down the river behind us a kilometer or so. Instead of striking right off of the hills to bypass some of the of the Gray River, uh, I didn't know what the Gray River, river was going to be like uh, with regards to the water levels. But uh, you know, it's unfortunate that it's like this because of the of the damming whatever, 40 odd kilometers up at Mealpeg Lake. Uh, but for us, it's beneficial. Now we can, I don't know for how long, but I could see right now a good kilometer and a half, I don't, maybe more. I was zooming in with my camera. Uh, and it's like this thick, dried up shoreline the whole way. So it should be decent going, a lot, you know, different than what we've had so far. Won't be going up and down, but I don't know. I'm not going to speak too soon. Hey, Zach. 
we've done that before and have had plenty of surprises. <laughs> uh, but yeah, happy I didn't go right for the hills because that would have been, you know, it's not easy. If it can stay like this, even if it's like this for a couple kilometers, it's a couple kilometer break of uh, just on half level ground, you know, rocks, sand. So, anyhow, supper's on the go. Got some homemade dehydrated chili. It's going in the pot tonight. This is the stuff I, I made a video on my YouTube channel, on the channel. Uh, showing how to dehydrate this yourself and this is that chili so I got like five meals of it this is the first one I'm gonna have so far this trip which means there's four more left yip yippity do da day anyways Saku's fed he's chilling and uh, I'm gonna get fed up have a couple cups of tea and head up and scurry away in a tent because it's been a long one. Biggest day so far today, but it was a dandy. Back to stay. Good boy. Oh. Oh, it's a new day. I can certainly feel the labor yesterday. Whew. Oh, man. Ah, the old kilometers are adding up. What do you think, Zach? Zach was just out for a pee. My turn now. Zach's like, come on, old man. Let's go again. Zach, you're like a spring chicken. We had some threatening skies out there this morning. Looks like it's gonna rain. Nice spot for a campsite there, Sack, isn't it? Lovely.
on our way down Gray River now after some fairly heavy rain for a few hours so things are slippery but so far we've been keeping to the rocks because they're there where the water levels are so low we don't have to be up in the bush only one time I went up there so let's hope it stays that way on the way down now to see what they call Smoky Falls. I'm gonna to try to get down there. If it gets too dicey, I'll turn around. But we got around four kilometers down the river. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's where the salmon stop, the Atlantic salmon run. So, if so, we could get into them. I'm hoping. That's the main reason I'm coming down and to see the falls. So, well, we'll see soon. We'll see if we get there. And if we make it, we'll see if there's Atlantic salmon. I almost could have took the raft uh, down, but I was debating it. I just didn't want to get too far down and be all night getting up out of it. So, scrap that plan, but just enough water I'd say for to get down but this would be a lovely trip in the spring of the year when the water is high or in the fall but just nice to get in and see it all it is gorgeous So we're not getting around that sack. Looks like the other side you could, you could make it over there. I don't know if we can cross over at any point now. Looks looks like up here we might be able to cross over. I'm gonna see, but I'm not gonna press too hard here. Not worth uh, not worth it, you know? I'll leave it at that. Could potentially get across right here. But uh, there's a couple deep holes in between. You know, I could go up to my waist or something, but I don't know. Don't know if it's worth it, as I said. So keep looking. Hey, Sack, what do you think? You can get across here. I know that, no sweat. A little different for all pops here. Rocks are wet and slippery. All I had to do was choose the other side coming down <laughs> and I would have made it. Well, I was almost to the falls. I was probably three quarters of a kilometer away. Uh, you no, know, it's, it's difficult. There's spots, but there's big holes in between. I could get across here. If it happened to be all right and you get down a little further and realize, oh, well, I gotta get across the other side. And then we're just talking about a long evening. It's after 5.30 now. And we still got about three kilometers to get back to camp up through this. It's supposed to pour rain again too. I could have went up and went around the gorge up in the thick bush up there but it was a steep cliff to get up and I'll probably have enough gnarly situations ahead. This is a leisure day, not a grind. This is as far as we made it, we're halfway across, hey sack. But deep pool, no, <laughs> deep pool right there, not going at it. Uh, but look at this rock, pretty cool to see this. Like we're standing in the middle of the river. And this was all submerged at one point. You know, it was like that for thousands of years until she was dammed up. But uh, pretty cool, man. It's smooth as a baby's bottom, I tell you that. Smooth granite rock. 
Anyways, it's nice. It's nice, isn't it, Tech? She's nice. You can see uh, where the water levels used to be way back when, in the 50s or whenever it was, late 50s, early 60s, uh, <clears throat> before the damming, like all along here, the water should be up four or five feet above Saku. So this is a big river big impressive river and now it's just a shadow of its former self when the real gray river was alive and well you would never have walked through here you would have been up in that thick bush and uh, not even these rocks they would have been treacherous but now we just skip through here with ease. With ease, isn't it, Tech? We're just hopping rocks, taking our time. It's a bit of fun. Good exercise, isn't it, Tech? Cough it up. What are you eating? Grass. Oh, yeah. This way. Come on. One. So we're just about back to camp there now. There was no spot close enough to where we stopped to cross over. Uh, so that's it. No Smoky Falls. Maybe another day. No Atlantic salmon chances either. As far as uh, Alvin knew from Gray, down in Gray River, he said uh, they might be up that far, right? But he didn't know. Anyways, I'm never gonna know either. Uh, I could have crossed over there just behind me, but uh, then I would have had to go all the way back down the river, about a close on a couple K to where I was. So, not on this day. We're back to work tomorrow and we got a big one ahead of us. That shirt was getting pretty grimy, so I figured I'd give her a rinse. It's starting to stick to my skin and everything. But, uh, just a bit of laundry here before we take off now. Uh, it's mid-morning, it's a beautiful day. Come on, Zach, let's go. Come in. first time doing anything like this uh, within a video I figured I'd put it halfway instead of at the beginning but it's just a real brief break to announce uh, the release of a new book that's in bookstores it's called Saku's Great Newfoundland Adventure 
For those of you who have been following me online over the last two weeks, you've probably heard about it already. Uh, if you're new to the channel and new to our adventures, you may have not. But basically, uh, back in 2017, myself and Saku went 700 kilometers across the island of Newfoundland. Uh, there's a series on my channel, I'll link it above, and that's uh, the expedition in video form, uh, in a documentary kind of style. But this book here is going to be our expedition told from Saku's point of view. How this worked out was I returned from that trip and I wanted to write a book on it myself. I did write that book, it's going to be called Man and Dog Through the Newfoundland Wilderness. It's coming out in a couple weeks. But at the same time, a local author uh, approached me and said she wanted to write one about Saku and his experiences. So here it is. Um, it's an all-ages book, really it is. It's certainly aimed at the youth a little more, but it's all-ages. Uh, it has outdoor educational skills, like, you know, camping skills. It has uh, facts on Newfoundland, our history, our geography, landscape, and, uh, and much more. So, if you're looking to get anyone, especially younger people, interested in the reading, interested in the outdoors, I think this would make a great gift uh, coming up, you know, uh, or for Christmas. And if you consider doing that, it's just basically a huge help to the channel. So, me and Saku can continue to get out and, you know, do some more writing and make some more videos uh, to, to share our, our adventures. So, I really appreciate if you consider purchasing the book, uh, you can do that below in the video description. I have the link to my shop. It's a Justin Barber Shopify store I have set up. Uh, that's one option to buy the book. You can also go to the chapter's website and get it there as well, or chapter stores across Canada. But if you purchase from my store, you're giving a little extra help to the channel, and uh, it's all very much appreciated. So again, Saku's Great Newfoundland Adventure, a wonderful book, and uh, I hope you consider purchasing one. So, back to the video. We're back at her again today after uh, a bit of a leisure day there yesterday. Uh, yesterday morning started off with thunder and there was heavy rain. Oh, up until early afternoon. Then we hung out here and the young caribou came out on the banks and uh, he was eating some grass, he was lying down, he had a nap, he got back up again, walked around. So we watched that whole thing for yeah, at least an hour. And then we struck off on a little mini expedition down the uh, the Grey River. I think we covered up and back, it was about six kilometers. Anyways, it was unsuccessful. I was trying to get down to the Smokies. The, I think it's the biggest waterfall, they say, on the Grey River. But the gorge stopped us. Anyhow, I was going to go back down this morning, but there was thunder and lightning this morning and into the wee hour, well, late last night into the wee hours this morning, and then the rain continued on till, geez, I think it was just after nine, but it's beautiful out now, and uh, so that's it, can't go down there now, got to start making some forward motion here today in case there's delays ahead. That's all we can do. Might be back someday. But it's been a beautiful campsite here. Lovely. One of those ones you hate to leave, you know? Just a beautiful spot, peaceful. There's a lovely, I think it's a bit of an old growth birch forest there behind the camp and all the trees are, you know, big birch trees, most of them. And, uh, yeah, lots of birch bark, and there's, it's been no trouble. There's a lot of dead uh, spruce back there too, and birch low down, so lots of firewood. And uh, yeah, we don't gotta be so. I didn't have to be so economical about it like I was back up in the hills. Jeez, 
up there I was scared to burn all the wood I had, afraid we'd run out and not be able to get a fire going, like it was madly up there. But that's it. I was thinking about, I could almost take the raft up the river, but we still have a, a bit of a heavy load, Saku's food, you know, I still got a decent bit there. And everything else, I don't know if it'll be worth it, so. The walking along the beach seems all right. So that's what I'm gonna roll with. Hey, Sack. Come on, Sack, you wake up. We gotta get going soon, buddy. Saku just started barking out of nowhere. I was just packing up camp here, taking everything down, and uh, a black bear was perched up over there on, on a log. Can't see the log <coughs> from here right now. But he, he was barking, I couldn't see nothing. I looked and I looked and I looked, and just over there was a bear. Now, popped down, he took off pretty quick. Stay here a sec. Right over there. Right over there behind that tree. Sneaking around. We've been here for a couple days now, having fires, cooking stuff. <clears throat> so, they made their way in, or I only seen one. Looked decent size. They want nothing to do with us. Nothing. And that's good. But you still gotta play it safe. Good boy, Sack. Good job. Fine security guard you are, bud. Once he let off a few barks, the bear was gone. Okay, we're all geared up, ready to go. With Saku's bag, of course his food's in Ziploc bags. But sometimes they fail, they have for me in the past. Small little tears, food gets wet, it's no good. So I got Ziploc bags inside dry bags here and a black one here. And that's how it rolls for Saku. He got his bowl, uh, which is after tearing, but we have a half bowl that works. And uh, he carries his leash as well. <clears throat> but it's nice now, our bags are uh, shrinking in volume, you know, which means they're getting a bit lighter and we're gonna move a bit quicker. The wheels are going again. Looking forward now to uh, exploring the banks of the Grey River. In these hot summer conditions, the caribou flock to the riverbanks to have a cool drink and catch the stiff breeze. The latter relieves them of the bloodthirsty flies that attack while they travel the woods. He don't have a worry about us. Not a worry in the world.
Here, we even catch a glimpse of a caribou and geese at the same time. Ah, line change. Time to sit down for a couple minutes here, a little break. Man, the gray is teeming with wildlife here today. We've already seen a bear, at least, I don't know if it was close on, 10 geese, some older with the young mixed in, uh, and two separate caribou. So, awesome. It is awesome. What a spot. I think it goes to show how undisturbed this area is. You know, no one's ever in here. There's no sign of anything other than the fact, you know, that the river is has been dammed, yada yada. Uh, it's untouched and uh, <laughs> it is wicked. Wow. Anyways, can't wait to see what comes next. One benefit of sticking to the river is that we stay close to a water source. If we were to walk the high surrounding hills, we would sometimes have big gaps between ponds and streams. And in those situations, you can become pretty thirsty. Zach, take your time now. It's getting pretty steep here now. We're going to have to do a little tiptoeing. You can fly at spots. It's four or five feet deep there. So. I'd rather not go in. This is all soft, sandy, sandy banks. Like the beach out on the river further back. And uh, yeah, we'll have a few of these ahead of us, I think. Watch out, Sack. Be careful, Sack's getting a bit close up there. Deeper here now. Definitely over my head. The worst looks to be over for that part. Made her. That was fun. Bit of shade in here now, it's nice. The sun's beaming down again. Spoke too soon. Just had to scurry under that tree. And I went in, soft sand. <laughs> Not too bad. Over the boot though. They're gonna be soggy now. Okay, Sack, it's well, time to go. You're cut up now, hey? I'll get you through. Hold on. Had to get into it. Had to get into it. Zach, he was scurried through the alders, though he got a bit wet. I had to go up to my groin. That's it. Gotta check the pack now, make sure nothing fell off. Good boy, Zach. So that's the mess we just came around. And just behind those al alders, there was a deep pool and that's where we had to go in. And Zach who actually got one of his saddlebags wet. So once I sat down and squeezed the water out of my boots and socks, I figured I'd let him dry for 10 minutes. And I looked in the Saku's bag and the saddle, it did get wet. Uh, funny enough, I talked about it this morning, this black bag here had a little tear in the bottom, about a centimeter long, that uh, I didn't notice, and which, and this happens, these bags get little, they couldn't, they might not be done up all the way, which it shifts when it's in the bag, or it could be a tiny tear, 
uh, either either way both got a little bit of damp cable nothing serious so I'm gonna let it dry out that's it there will be a little delay we may as well <laughs> have kept going we only stopped for about 10 minutes max starts pouring out dark clouds had lurked for a while but the rain came quicker than expected once the showers ceased a beautiful evening awaited us and after some more hard work we looked for a camp So we got things half in order here, don't we, Sack? Sack's taking the snooze. Uh, kettle's on for a hot cup of tea. It's going to be good. Boots are drying. Socks. Saku's bag was drying out in the last few rays of the sun, but that just faded, so I'll put that over here shortly. And uh, yeah, this is Kemp. Bundle of sticks for the fire tomorrow morning. Beautiful view. What did we get today, Sack? It was just over, just over a dozen kilometers, roughly. Total haul on the ground. Uh, but up the river from last camp, we we're around just over ten. As the crow flies, so. There were some nice bends in and out, and uh, walking the shoreline, I had to follow those bends. So, either way, it was a good haul, great day, some great experiences, and uh, I'm sure there's lots more to come tomorrow. What do you think, Zach? Good day, old chap. We'll have a little picnic now, bud. A little picnic. Just getting things stowed away now before the evening really sets in and uh, I got all our food in the dry pack and what I got done is I, I haven't done this every evening but I have this evening and a, a few others I got uh, the frying pan there and the paddle if a beer happens to come and get into it well he's gonna knock that stuff down and make a racket and wake us up and We'll do what we gotta do. But let's hope that doesn't happen. But around here there's an old spine belonging to something and some other old bones, so God knows what's been down on this point. So I'm playing it safe. Uh, and you know, you should do that every evening. But sometimes I get a bit complacent and I'll just lay it under the tarp or lay it somewhere not far from the tent, but <clears throat> Anyway, just a couple precautions Look at that sky vicious I don't know if we're gonna get another dumping, but there's been thunder off and on all day and of course there's been rain 
We got wet a couple of times, but then it cleared up again. So that's a wrap for this evening. Catch you tomorrow. morning here. Uh, we actually got a nice northwest wind. You can probably hear it in the microphone, but that's it. But it's cool. First time of the trip, we've had a cool wind, so it's nice for a change. Saku's pack's all dried out, bone dry. My boots are just about dry. And uh, yeah, that's it. So before we strike off this morning, I uh, just want to talk about the tent. Now, I'm not getting paid for this, uh, you know, this is not a sponsorship thing. I just want to talk about the MSR uh, Hubba Hubba tent that I've been using now for, well, since 2017 I got it, before the Crossing Newfoundland trip. And, uh, you know, it's been through a lot with me. Uh, over the 200, certainly 200 nights, I'd say closer to 250 nights I've spent in this tent, it's been through, you know, rainstorms. No storms. Definitely got a good 30 centimeters. Wind. Sleet. You know, you name it. Uh, and, you know, I, I often call this thing the bomb shelter because I think it is. I think it, it can stand up to, you know, here in Newfoundland we get a lot of crazy weather and it can stand up to that, it can stand up to anything else. And people have commented on some of the videos and have said, you know, they've, they've noticed, like, you know, you've put that tent through a lot, it's been through a lot, it must be a good tent. Some of you have the same tent, you've experienced it yourself, uh, you know, but it's great. And, uh, you know, the reason why I think it's great, uh, well, I have, I've picked out five reasons why I think this is a great tent. And I just want to quickly go over them with you. The first one is that it's waterproof, you know, it keeps out any moisture or rain or whatever it might be great rain fly on the top you know mine now even with some burn holes and patched up with aqua seal and duct tape uh, you know it's still hardly ever hardly get a leak maybe a drip here and there now and that's only been lately I think maybe this the waterproof ceiling has worn down a bit I don't know either way it's it's been great and I've been in some serious rainstorms in this tank from beneath uh, one of the biggest problems I had with past is, is being uh, you know, with a wet surface and water pooling up on an uneven campsite and the water li literally coming up to the bottom of the tent. And that pool that was underneath is now inside the tent. Uh, with this one, I've been on uneven surfaces and literally have seen puddles under the tent. And the most that has came through was a bit of condensation. It was amazing. Uh, and if you want to see that, you can go back and check out one of my original, one of the first videos I put on YouTube, which was crossing the Avalon Wilderness Preserve, and I'll put that link above. Uh, but yeah, it's, so it's, it keeps your bone dry. It's spacious. There's lots of room on the inside. Uh, you know, I can sit up anywhere in the tent. You know, lying down, great. Even with Saku in there, uh, and I'm around six foot and plenty of space. Uh, it has the vestibule, so the vestibules are great. I call them the porches. You can store things underneath here. Things, uh, you know, like my life jacket, for example. If I don't want to keep that out in the elements, I don't want to have it in my tent, I can store it in here, close this up, 
and it's completely sheltered and you have plenty of room uh, on both sides, you know, you have a front and you have a back. It's perfect, it's like a house. <laughs> so, yeah, so the vestibules is great. Uh, yeah, lots of room in there. It's easy to set up. It has a one, it's a one piece pole that just expands out and uh, nothing to it. Uh, it's freestanding. I like that about a tent. So once you get the four posts put in the corners and the clips on, you can pick the tent up and, and put it anywhere. Uh, so that's good for setting up uh, at the end of a long day. It's quick. Uh, you can kind of put it in a lot of places versus a non freestanding tent. It's, it's a little difficult. You got to guide down with ropes on a bunch of different places. And those tents sometimes, they, they take longer to set up and you have to be in the, in the correct area. You can't always put it up in certain tight spots. With, with regards to this one, you can't. So I really like that. Uh, you know, non-freestanding tents may be a little lighter, but I take a few extra grams to have a freestanding one that's quicker for me to put up uh, at the end of a long day. And the last thing is, uh, is the tent is light. I mean, I don't know the, the specs offhand now, but I think it's around two and a half pounds, maybe 2.2. Either way, it's a light tent. If you're going backpacking, uh, you can't go wrong. So that's it. Uh, I hope I didn't blabber on too long. That's why I enjoy this MSR Hubba Hubba tent, and that's why it's worked for me. What a trip this has turned into. Now we're tucked away far from civilization and it is delicious. Other than the natural sounds of the wilderness, it's silent and eerily peaceful. The upriver travel is about to become more challenging and the wildlife encounters more intimate. Next episode we come face to face with the majestic beasts that call this land their home. Don't miss it. <laughs>